Thank you, thank you, and good morning. Very excited that you're here today. This is a really, I think, stellar and important event and should be for everybody that's here a highlight of this weekend and of this program and quite frankly for 2013. We are celebrating, and it's hard for me to believe because it makes me feel very old, uh, but 10 years of the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress. So uh, thank you for coming and helping us celebrate that. And this time is going to go by very quickly because we have an action-packed event for you. Uh, we have many of the people who have been involved in some of the highest profile things within the profession are here to talk to you today, to add value to your life and to your practice. And what excites me about this is the fact that there's an old saying that, I'll, I'll clean it up a little, but when you're up to your butt in alligators, it's hard to remember that the mission is to drain the swamp. And we spend our days in our practices, in our businesses, doing what we do. And you get preoccupied, and sometimes the blinders come up, and you don't really peek your head up and look around to see what's going on around you in your, in your profession. And there's two sides of that coin, because one side is there's more you could do to contribute to the expansion and the development and the improvement of chiropractic worldwide. And at the same time, there's a lot you also could be doing to improve your practice and make it better. But I think one thing that we all agree with is the fact that the esteem and the brand equity of this profession, what I'm talking about is how the public perceives us, is of critical consequence. It matters to us as chiropractors, not just because it would improve our practices, increase our patient volume, improve our retention, all those other things that chiropractors care about. But in addition to that, I believe all of us have this deep need to want to have a sense of legacy about what we did. That if we spend our entire lives working within this profession, administering what we do in the way of health and well-being to the world, promulgating the principles of chiropractic in the way that we do, recognizing that there's somewhat adverse forces to that, that we look at this and say, you know, it's not just about did I make a living, but did I make a difference and not only that, is there a legacy going on beyond that difference I made? And collectively, we have the power and the ability, et cetera, not just in the trite way that people say, yo, let's get together and commune and kumbaya and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about in a real way, that we can do something and have been doing things of significance that help our profession raise in its brand equity and simultaneously go out there uh, in the world and feel good about who we are, what we do, and have other people respect it in the proper way that they should. Now, 10 years this foundation has been doing its work, and I can remember over 10 years ago, my dear friend, who was, I believe, uh, a, even though he's well-known, well-respected, and immensely loved in the profession, I believe the true depth of his commitment to the profession, the time, money, and energy that he puts into this profession is still underappreciated, that people don't recognize the significance of this man's contribution. The founder of the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress it was his brainchild. And secondly, he also personally funds all the overhead of the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress so that we can have a great and better profession that can make an, an impact on the world beyond what would happen if this person didn't exist. So I'd like you to appreciate with this 10 years, Mr. Kent Greenwald. Here he is. Kent will be coming up in a few moments personally to, uh, to, to work with you. How many people are familiar with the movie Doctor? OK. Good for you. So, I have a personal experience with the movie. I, I uh, had first was uh, asked to come and, and be uh, filmed for the movie, uh, some, I guess it was uh, about a year ago. And uh, that first experience was pretty extraordinary to go and sit and have these questions asked and have an outside filmmaker come into this profession. And what was the dream but to say, wow, the chiropractic being, story being told so people can understand where we've been and where we're going and what the value is that chiropractic brings. And we were thinking about the amount, you know, if this movie could catch fire, if people in our community could watch it, et cetera, how exciting that would be. 
And I can tell you that right now with the foundation, I believe it's estimated that there are about, with the foundation's work, there's about 26 billion impressions, 20, with a B now, billion impressions made per year. So the dollars that go into the foundation are very valuable. But we also see this emerging thing with, with Docker. And we said, wow, a documentary film that tells our story. I have clients that have gone out there and rented movie theaters, shown this film to large volumes of people, create action in their communities. And it brought a community of chiropractors together, the likes of which I've never seen before, to get behind a project. Because the impact that this, that this movie, this documentary, has not only had in my life personally, when I met Jeff Hayes and I saw what he was doing, I said to myself, my goodness, 27 years I've been in this profession, I've been waiting for this moment for somebody to step up and do something like this, to champion our cause with their own expertise in being able to tell a story through filmmaking. And that's exactly what Jeff got accomplished. So we have members of the cast of Doctors that are here that you'll be hearing from shortly. But first, I want you to hear from Jeff Hayes. Jeff is an immensely lovable man that I'm really proud to say has become my friend through this process of making this movie. And I'll also tell you that he's got this incredible commitment and passion about what we do. And he has put together for you here today a film clip, an unseen, previously unseen film clip from the footage of Doctor that you, that you have not seen yet. So let's give it up for Mr. Jeff Hayes. Thank you. That's for you. Can you hear me? I, I think I'm, uh, I'm Mike. So thank you very much for having me. I hope, uh, first off, how many of you have already seen the movie Doctor? So I, I'm delighted for the hands that didn't go up. If, if for the ones of you that have seen it, I hope that the love and affection that both Bobby and I developed for this profession through the course of filming it uh, came through. We've met the finest people in the world in the process of doing this film. I literally stunned at the quality uh, of the people that you associate with. I hope you don't take it for granted. The foundation for chiropractic progress was involved from the very beginning and not in an official capacity. Um, I don't think we could have made the film without them. The, because of the mission of the foundation, because of what Kent set in place and, and, and this fit their, their criteria. It was a little risky to get involved with me because they didn't know how it was gonna come out. So they did it on an individual basis. Uh, and we're talking about these people put up money. They put up money individually. They put up uh, their contacts. They risk their reputations. And so this is the perfect forum to acknowledge in a semi-private setting the profound impact that the foundation had on making this film. This film could be the most important thing to happen to chiropractic last year and this year if the people in this room and the people in your profession choose to make it so. One of the things the foundation is doing, and you'll see this in, in the handout that you've been given, is that anyone who signs up as a foundation member is given 25 copies of a DVD. That's astounding. That, 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 that's the reason for that, obviously, you can't watch that 25 times, so I assume that that means about, well, I guess you can. I've watched it at least 25 times, but you're not going to want to, having done that, you're not going to want to watch it 25 times, but it's not for you to watch. It's to get this out in the public, and when you gift this, we'll put a video up. When you gift this to someone, the way you give it to someone is to tell them to please watch it and then pass it on. If you watch this and ask yourself, what would happen to my community if everyone in my community saw this? I think that'll tell you what to do with it. So I put together a little six minute clip. It's just some insights from some of the people that are in the film, things that I wish we could have included in the film. Uh, it's not really a trailer. This is the only time it'll be shown. This is just uh, for you guys and I hope you like it. Thank you. My dad was a chiropractor that graduated from chiropractic college in 1948. One thing that I can really remember is when I was at swimming class at the YMCA. I'm doing the things that the teacher wants you to do. And she says to me, oh yeah, 
Greenewald, Kent Greenewald. Uh, your dad's the quack, right? <laughs> I said, what? She said, isn't he a chiropractor? I says, yes, he is. She says, well, he's not a real doctor, is he? I said, well, he's not a medical doctor, but he is a real doctor. The story of how my dad came to Louisiana and began his career in chiropractic is probably not unlike many other chiropractors after World War II. His mother experienced violent headaches. And I remember grandmother telling me the story that a girlfriend of hers saw an ad in the paper that said there's a different kind of doctor. He's called a chiropractor. After a couple upper cervical adjustments, all her headaches vanished and she felt wonderful. When my dad returned from World War II, she told my father, son, you should consider becoming a chiropractor. I remember when I joined my dad in practice, I said, dad, I, I want to get involved in the community. And my dad smiling, he said, son, I think that's a good idea. He said, you just have to have the courage to, to stay committed to your principles, stay committed to the things that you know are right, because you're able to make a difference. One of the things that my dad told me is that if you want to be successful as a doctor, if you want to be fulfilled in what you do, he said you have to have absolutely boundless or unlimited love for your patients. When people come into the office, I want them to feel like family and want them to know that I'm all in. When you love something and you can focus in on it, it makes the day go by very fast. And you build relationships with people when, you, when they tell you what's wrong with you, you're really listening. The patients will almost always tell you exactly what's wrong with them. If you let them talk long enough and you listen with intent, they'll tell you, you know, how they got in the bind they're in. The experience of coming to work and making changes in people that make their life better is really rewarding. It is so addicting to come in and help, help people every single day and actually help change their physiology. This body is an amazing system and we're just barely scratching the surface of what's possible. Working with elite athletes, I've been able to see just how effective this work is for one, predicting injuries and in the process preventing injuries, but actually reversing injuries in a really short period of time. Stockton falls down and Stockton is hurt. If something bad happened like the sprained ankle, I didn't have to adapt around it. We got it back online. The part that's impressive to me is the next night I was able to play pain-free. Yeah. And that's after finishing the game on, a, on an acutely sprained ankle that was pretty bad. Okay, Peekaboo has got to take advantage of her smooth course now. I can remember when I first met Dr. Bueller. It was post-ACL reconstruction. So tell me about the knee. You feel unstable? I do. I feel like there's no clicking or locking, but there's instability. And that's what's making me nervous. Every time I'm in here, I'm quizzing him. What are you doing? Why is this working? Why is that? What's connected to this? And how does the system work together in this capacity? And so I'm learning the whole time that I'm in here what my body's doing, why it's doing it, and how I can make it do it or not do it. I feel physically good. I feel emotionally healthier. And in my mind, I'm invigorated because I've been inspired with this learning about me. To feel like that you're being part of the solution as a patient is um, empowering. I would walk out of my treatments and my engagement with the chiropractor and feel like I am part of this plan. You know, I'm leading myself to wellness and I'm being guided by my chiropractor instead of going to another doctor just being told, well, it's not this, it's not that, we'll check this out, we'll take this blood, we'll do this surgery. The next time a doctor tells me I have to have surgery, I'm gonna be checking all everything out first. And the culture is now seeking chiropractic. They're seeking non-drug, non-surgical ways to achieve better health and well-being. They're looking for guidance and lifestyle that would prevent them from being customers of the sick care system in the first place. The biggest contradiction in our culture today is calling medicine healthcare. Medicine is not healthcare, it's sick care. And when you take sick care and provide it to a culture like healthcare, then you end up with a sick culture. And that's why we spend $2.7 trillion dollars per year on what we call healthcare, and we're incredibly sick as a culture. This pharmaceutical domination of, of our healthcare, which is really a sickness care system, is now actually causing chronic illness. It's actually now part of the problem. Selling treatments and, and pills to sick people is incredibly lucrative. But those pills don't cause the chronic illness, they just don't fix it. You just can't fix a problem that's nutritionally caused with a pill and you can't fix a problem that's based on sedentary living or not enough exercise with a pill. And we certainly can't fix problems that are based on a lack of community or love or you know, the psychosocial needs that humans have uh, with a pill or drug or surgery either. It is not sheer manipulation that is the tool of the chiropractor. 
It is a grounding philosophy in understanding vitalism. And it is an, a specific adjustment with the right intent and the understanding of the individual and the look at particular outcomes that matter to a chiropractor that makes chiropractic chiropractic. We are making an effort to tell the world about what chiropractic does. That little incident back in the swimming pool at the YMCA where the teacher said, your dad's a quack, I made myself a personal promise that said, someday the time will be right when, when we can educate people and really get a message out there that is, that is helpful to the people in this country and the world. Okay. Jeff. Can we just properly acknowledge this man for what the work he and the passion he put into this film? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. You know, you, you see Thank you. You see what's on camera and you see, you know, the these cameo appearances, but I could tell you sitting at lunch with him and watching him get teary-eyed over talking about the meaning of this message and how important it is to get it to the world, you, you begin to recognize that we have a family member here within the profession. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now if I could have our panel join us, we have a celebrity panel from people who appeared in Doctored. Uh, each of them are going to spend a few minutes uh, giving you what they seem to be, what they feel they want to share with you right now as far as the best practice for success for your life, for your practice in all realms. And just to give the list, we have Olympian Peekaboo Street with us, who's going to be here with Dr. Bueller, who did such a wonderful job uh, showing her appreciation of chiropractic in the film. Dr. Jason West. Dr. Francis Murphy, Dr. James Chestnut, Dr. Craig Bueller, Dr. Fab, you're supposed to be up here with us also, at least on my list. <laughs> Come on up. Dr. Fab Mancini, we'll be seeing him also in a little while. Dr. Mike Flynn, where is Mike? I know he's here. Okay. Is he coming? Okay. He'll be coming in a second. Let's hear it for Dr. Mike Flynn while we wait for him to come up. And General Becky Halstead. So uh, we're going to start out with uh, Dr. Francis Murphy. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Hello. Hey, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm really, really proud to be here today. Uh, making the movie Doctored was a great, great experience. What I'm up here to say today is that I am a proud, proud contributor to the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress. And I want to I want to make a stand here today. And and you ever you ever have heard in your lifetime people will say this person passed in my life, and I wish I would have told them I love them, or I wish I would have said something that impacted them. And and I want to tell you that our profession, healthcare is in a bad shape right now. We're going through some struggles, they're really tough times. And on the other side of these struggles, there's gonna be some winners and there's gonna be some losers. We have to be on the winning side. We have to be. And it's gonna be too late, a year or two or three down the road to say, I wish I had done something. I wish I, I, wish I did something. So we've been asked to come up here and give some of uh, some tips on success. So I'm going to give you my two tips on success, and I'm going to tell you how it relates to me being up here tonight, today. <laughs> the first thing is everybody here should be plugged into a power source. What is your power source? And stay plugged in for the rest of your career and the rest of your life. We have to look at it, look yourself straight in the mirror and say that the foundation is our power source, is one of our most powerful power sources and we can't afford to lose it. Everybody here needs to pick up a pen and sign the paperwork and contribute. 
because we have to. We have no choice. You have no choice. And down the road when we're powerful and where we were supposed to be, you will have made the contribution that you have to make. And it has to, it can't just be once, it's got to be continuous. You have to stay plugged in. And the other tip I have for you is you have to stay authentic. Everybody here is an individual, and when you deliver that adjustment, you deliver that report of findings, it's got to be, it has to have special meaning. It has to be something that you feel in your heart. And the things you feel in your heart are the things that you're connected to every day. Uh, over the, before the Christmas holiday, before I traveled to the Northeast to be with my family, I traveled up to Utah, and I spent three days with uh, Jeff and Dr. Bueller and Dr. West, Jeff Hayes, and we just powwowed. They're part of my power source. They're where I get inspiration. They make me feel connected to my profession, to the cutting edge of what's going on out there, to the information. Why? Because they're seekers. They seek more information. They never put people down. They always are inspiring people. They're right, and they come from a right place. And I feel very strongly to come up here and say to you, we, we can't be the profession that we used to be anymore. We have to reinvent ourselves because healthcare is reinventing itself. And we got to end up on top. And we do it with our heart, our mind, and our dollars. It can't happen any other way. All right? So before I give up the microphone, <laughs> I just want to say one more thing, and that is that each and every one of you are just as important as your neighbor. And you can make the same contribution by just being present, helping one another, lending a hand, and contributing. So please pick up your pens and fill out that paper because it's so important to each and every one of us. You may not realize it today, but you will realize it. Thank you. Nicely done. Next up, we have Dr. James Chestnut. Thank you. Oh, I'm not used to these mics, but awkward phallic. Anyway, um, I was asked to share a couple of tips, so um, I, I, will, I will do that. And the first one I'm going to share is one for you in your practice. And um, as, as Dr. Gentempo, as Patrick always eloquently states, chiropractic is is not a motor skill, it's a, it's a movement. It's a, it's, a, it's a state of mind and a, and, a, and a paradigm and a philosophy. I, I think life is about asking the right questions. And, and one of the things I've learned early on is this, is that you should never see yourself as earning a living from your patients. You should never see yourself as making a living from the number of patient visits and you should never see yourself as making a living from delivering your care. You must always understand that you make a living from the results that you elicit in your patients. That might sound like semantics, but I promise you, if you change that mindset to understanding that the way you make a living is by patient outcome, you will be a chiropractic genius. And if as long as you focus on the patient outcome, like some of these brilliant docs behind me do so well, the income will always take care of itself. In fact, you'll have so much extra to give to the foundation that all our problems will be solved. Which brings me to tip number two, uh, which is this. The question isn't, again, the right question. The, que the question isn't what you will get back if you, if you provide support for the foundation. When you grow up and understand this, that you do not fight for your right to practice chiropractic, you must always fight for the right of patients to receive it. And what you are going to do today when you make a pledge to this foundation is not ask what you're going to get back, you're gonna ask what life will be saved somewhere 
where someone will hear about chiropractic and have access to get it. So I'm not going to just ask you to make a pledge today. I'm going to ask you to make the moral, to understand your moral obligation to commit to not only make a pledge on this form, but find four other people who will do that this weekend at this seminar. And I know you will. Thank you very much. Dr. Jason West. You know, I have a, everybody has their own niche practice, and uh, one of my niches is I always get the train wrecks. As a matter of fact, we were joking at breakfast. I had a, a talk with a specialist, and he called about a patient and said, well, you really didn't help the patient. They just went into spontaneous remission. <laughs> and I said, that's it. I'm changing the name of the clinic to the Clinic of Spontaneous Remission. Because that happens all the time. But one of the things that's really important about the foundation is how many people could you help if they knew that you could help them before they entered into this um, um, assembly line in medicine. And to me, that's what the chiropractic uh, foundation does for us. Is so many times I see people, I'm like, man, I could have helped you so much easier if I would have caught you on the front end instead of on the back end. So when we talk about uh, uh, tips, here's a couple of them. One, and this has been really fun to work with Dr. Murphy on, is you have to define to the universe what you want. Everybody has the practice that they want. Everybody has the, the clinic that they want. Everybody has the staff that they chose. If you don't like it, choose differently. You can do that. You have to tell the universe what you want. And then the other thing that I would tell you is tips for success, which is what they asked me to talk on, is your staff. And let me tell you a little bit about the staff. One is there's no more important patient in your patient population than your staff. So I don't provide benefits to the staff in, in a con kind of conventional sense, but if you work for me, you don't get sick. I take care of you, and I take care of all of your family. And if you want a neat way to do it, you know Uncle Sam will pay for that if you set up a medical reimbursement plan or what they call a MERP, where the, I have the staff pay me for the service, I immediately turn around and pay that, I get a tax write-off on that. My staff don't get sick. The next thing, and this is one of, the, one of the things that the staff taught me, is she said, Dr. J, we don't know everything that you can do for your patients because you're not telling us. So here's the way to, to get the outcomes that Dr. Chestnut was talking about, and then it rains money in your office. See, I used to have an office where we had a medical doctor, three chiropractors, a naturopath, a physical therapist, and a biologic dentist in one office. And, and we had all this money coming in, and guess what? It all went out. Matter of fact, one man, we collected $257,000, and I spent $254,000 to collect it. I'm like, what? <laughs> I work 160 hours for $3,000. It doesn't work that way. So we sat down with the staff. This is what you do. Go in, get in your office in the morning. Go in early, whatever that means. Type up, your, uh, type up all your patients and tell exactly what you're going to do for them, how you're going to deliver the outcome, when, uh, w what supplements or nutrition you're going to have them on, lifestyle modifications, and the return to clinic. And what happened, you go over that every single morning with your staff. We started doing it a year and a half ago. I make more money now than I did when I had my multiple discipline clinic as a single provider with doing that. Your staff can teach you so much. And if anybody calls your office, they, they should talk to your staff. Your staff should know my doctor can deliver. It's all about the delivery. So if we can deliver the services and we can catch people before the horse leaves the barn, that's why you all need to open up your checkbooks and, and, and support the foundation because if you can do it that way, then we make even a bigger impact than trying to trade the train wrecks at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Craig Bueller in Olympian, Peek Olympian Peekaboo Street. Thank you. There's so much that I'd like to share with you, and I have uh, about an hour worth of information to deliver in two minutes. So hold on to your hats. You know, I, I practiced chiropractic for 18 years before I discovered chiropractic. And I listen to Sigafoos and some of the old timers talk about miracles in your office every day. And I saw miracles once in a while, but I didn't see them every day. So I decided I need to learn about chiropractic. So I started studying with people like Dr. Kale and Dr. Uh, Epstein and some of these um, principled chiropractors. And I discovered the power of toggle recoil and the miracle of chiropractic. And I felt ripped off because I didn't get that in school. And as I lecture around the country and I talk to doctors, I find that that probably is the single most 
important thing that they're missing in practices and why so many of us struggle. And I've seen what happens in people's practices when they finally get the big idea. You know, Dr. Palmer talked about delivering the adjustment with that special something. Well, that special something is your intentionality. Your intention drives the miracle. And so if you want a powerful success tip, implement that into your practice. Go wherever you need to go to learn about the principles of chiropractic. I thought I adjusted this, the, the atlas axis before, and I found out that I didn't. And just another tip, just take a moment before you deliver the adjustment to close your eyes and sense the patient. That is so important, because if your mind's out there, you're ripping the patient off. It's that specifically delivered adjustment with a pure intent from the heart that creates the miracle. And we talk about magic. magic, magic sleight of hand. It's not about magic, it's not about sleight of hand, it's miracle that happens in people's lives. My life is so much richer because of that one concept. And this profession struggles because we don't get it. Now, that's the foundation. Beyond that, we use the science to guide the techniques as tools to paint this masterful masterpiece with pe individual patients that we see. Now, when we talk about the foundation, we talk about the doctored movie, I'm here to tell you both of those programs are inspired. We have struggled our whole career as a profession. There's this veil of prejudice that's, that's kept us from really being exposed to the patients, the people, the public at large. These programs are designed to break down those, those veils of prejudice, to expose the general public to the miracle of what we do. And as this movie unfolded, miracle after miracle after miracle happened to bring people at the right place at the right time. And we're the benefactor. If I came to all of you and said, listen, I got this great program. We're gonna have this amazing international PR program. And what I need from you is $3 million. Can I get your support? You'd look at me like I had three heads, right? We've got this multi-million dollar program that's not costing any of us a dime that people have sacrificed. Kent Greenwald's company. So many people have sacrificed for us. It's like God has said, you finally struggled enough. I'm intervening. So if we don't seize the moment and participate in this and support us, we have got so much power if we would just merge together as a group and support instead of getting out of our head about all the reasons why we shouldn't or why we can't and focus on thank you for sharing ego and I'm doing this. So we as a profession are moving forward through all the challenges that we faced and that's really what the Olympic spirit is all about. And this lady right here epitomizes that spirit. She's gone through three reconstructive knee surgeries to repair, replace crucial ligaments, meniscus repairs. And when I saw her four months out from the Olympic trials, she couldn't do one-legged squat controlled without pain, and she was cleared to train. And we, we, we worked with her and balanced her. She pushed through that and made the Olympic team. And so I really am proud to have her here. And, and you guys should be really tickled to have someone of her caliber behind this, um, our profession. Because people listen to greatness. And she's one of the great. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so blessed and fortunate to have found Dr. Bueller and to found to have found chiropractic. I, I had been adjusted several times in my life, but never really knowing exactly what it was doing for me. And so when I met Craig, I felt like I met um, someone who could teach me about my life, about my body, about what was happening with me, about why I had gotten hurt so many times back to back, and why I hadn't. I had rehabbed. I had gotten strong. I was squatting a ton, and he just isolated me and exposed my vulnerabilities, and it was crushing. I'm gonna tell you it was crushing. I was literally on the brink of the Olympic team with 278 some odd muscles shut down in my system thinking, yeah, I'm gonna beat the world. Yeah, right. I'm gonna be lucky to make it to the finish without going splat again, was where I was at. And it was crushing and it was hard and I cried a lot. 
and I set a schedule up and, and it was amazing how quickly with him opening it up, my body awareness and training accordingly, I was able to put myself back in alignment and get myself back going in the right direction. And it's, it, it planted a seed and this will be astonishing for you. The whole time I was an athlete, I never wrapped my brain around the big picture of it all. It was when I met Dr. Bueller and I started working on my body in a chiropractic sense that I actually became aware of what this all is and what it's capable of and how it all works. And I'm actually healthier now than I was the entire time in my career. And there's a little bit of, of regret there, like, oh man, I wish I had met him before. Like, what could I have done? Well, I did pretty good, so I guess I'm all right. But now, now it's about paying it forward. It's about making that difference. It's about calling the, the other teammates and saying, hey, you need to go see Craig. No, not because you just got hurt. I know you didn't just get hurt. You're totally healthy, right? You feel like you're fired up, ready to go. Yeah, go see Craig. Go see Dr. Bueller for a minute and let him tell you what's going on with your body and let him give you some awareness. And that was astonishing for me. I've turned several athletes on to him, and they've gone on to, to do their personal best and win Olympic medals. So, um, there's proof in the pudding of it. I am honored to be here and be a part of it. I have a big fat mouth, as you can see, so I've been running it um, a lot. And so I'm on, I'm on board, and, um, and uh, the American people deserve this. We deserve this. So thank you. Thank you. General Becky Halstead. All right. Hoo -ah. So I, I, you're a little tough to follow there, but you know, and actually I can't hear because she kept whistling in my ear back there. <laughs> so um, talk about passion. Uh, look, I could give a hundred success tips and I've chosen one. Success is a team sport. So I know um, both in peacetime and wartime on the teams that I served with in the military that little Becky Halstead did nothing by herself. Nothing by herself. And that whether I was the leader or I was the follower, it took a team. Everybody on the team was value added. And so, you know, keep reminding yourself it's not all about you. It's about the patience you serve. And, I, and it's key to, it's not all about you, but it is some about you. You must lead yourself to help them. You must lead yourself to serve them. It can be very easy to get caught up in, it's all about me, look how accomplished I am, I'm on the stage, whatever, whatever. Let that go and put your energy into those that you can serve and help. And that's what's so powerful about the foundation. It is giving the message that chiropractic matters. You are a strong force to contend with. In the army, you would be my enemy and I'd have to figure it out. You are a strong force to contend with. I am not a doctor of chiropractic, I am a patient. I want you to always be able to be part of my team of health. And I wouldn't be where I am today with my chronic fibromyalgia if it wasn't for Dr. Carol and Melizia. So it takes a team. Be part of the solution. Thank you for what you do. Let the foundation be your voice, but we don't get to do it if you don't sign up. It takes a team. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And we'll be hearing from him more later in the program, but I want to get a quick tip from him today. Dr. Fab Manzini. Well, you know, this program is all about success. Uh, the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress is all about success, making you successful, getting our message out there successful. But I will put it as simply as Dr. Parker shared it with me. The biggest principle that he taught me was develop a compassion to serve that's greater than your compulsion to survive. And I think all of us have one thing in common that we've been sharing this afternoon, and that is that when, it, when we serve, we are focusing all of our attentions in the needs of others. When we're thinking about survival, we're focusing all of our attentions towards our needs. I want you to know that by supporting the Chiropractic Foundation, you will be serving, not surviving. I'm tired of surviving. 
I entered this profession because I saw something that I didn't see in medicine. I saw a premise that was recognizing that the body heals from inside out. And that just turned me on. That just spoke to me. And I want you to recognize that there is a whole bunch of people out there struggling every day because no one has shared that premise with them. In our individual practice, we're very limited into the amount of people we can reach, and many of us are not the best communicators in the world. I believe the foundation has shown for the first time in our history a successful, proven method to get our message to the masses. But we can't do it without your help. So I'm asking you, I want you to start living on service rather than survival, and you can begin right now by supporting this foundation. God bless you. In a moment, I'm going to invite Kent Greenwald to the stage, but all of you got packets, yes? The foundation is very generous. You all got a copy of the movie Doctored in your packets. If you didn't get a packet, uh, raise your hands, and then people have packets. Maybe we'll get them to you. So there's a couple I see in the back. Also, extraordinarily importantly in those packets are these things, pledge forms. And how many people here, just by show of hands, uh, I'm just going to get a sense, are, are already contributing to the foundation? Okay, great. Well, we're going to talk more about that later, but it looks like not nearly enough hands went up because it's not every hand in the room. And also, I'm going to mention I'll be increasing my donation and my contribution to the foundation, especially in response to the fact that they just raised my taxes. Well, hell, I'd rather give it to the foundation than the government, wouldn't you? So I think it's a good idea. So if you're a proactive type person, which I think is a good habit to be in, you might want to actually start filling out these pledge forms now. We've got a ton of great program left. We have ESPN anchor Linda Cohn coming up. She's going to be interviewing Jerry Rice, the lead spokesperson for the foundation. You definitely want to engage in that. But I think you might as well start getting the pens moving now and get the vibe of that going and create some resonance in this room because they're locking the doors and nobody's leaving <laughs> until we get our pledge forms back. All right, so now, again, let me bring to the stage uh, my dear friend who does more for this profession than any one of us will ever possibly know, who deserves your undying support, love, and admiration for everything that he's doing for us. Let's hear from Mr. Kent Greenwald. Thank you. Thank you. you guys can speak. Good morning. I'm going to be very brief, but I want to give you a quick feeling of a little bit of history of how this all got started. Ten years ago at a meeting, the Congress of Chiropractic State Associations, in a hotel room, I invited every high-level leader that I could think of in the profession. I didn't tell them what the meeting was about, but I said, please come, and they did. And at that particular time in 2003, there were seven different independent public relations campaigns trying to go on at the same time in our profession. Realizing we don't have enough as a profession to buy a cup of coffee compared to some other large organizations, like the drug companies. I put together a pitch, talked to these leaders, and they bought it. And I asked them to do two things. The first thing I said was, whatever you're doing, quit. And I prepared a document that looked like the Declaration of Independence, old-fashioned paper, calligraphy, and I asked them to sign it. And they did. And this is remarkable because we had everyone from every political persuasion and chiropractic doing this. But they signed it. One down, one to go. The second document, said, the first one said, whatever you're doing, quit. So we put seven of them out of business in an afternoon. And the second thing I asked them to do is, that whatever you did, let's do it together. I believe that the, and I, get, I don't know if General Halstead could back me up on this, but divide and conquer, I think, is a strategy in war. And I think what we're doing, unite and prosper, is the opposite. And so they signed the second document. And from that point forward, it's history. It's 10 years, we're just getting started. Some of the things we've done, we have had PSAs, public service announcements, on radio and television. We've had ads in the Wall Street Journal. 
USA Today, Sports Illustrated, Working Mother. We've had lots of social media activity. But one of the things that is very important is your results. What did we really get done? What did we accomplish? And if you look at this little sheet that we, you have in your packet that says build your practice and your profession, it shows a graph here, like a business graph. Get this. The planning committee at the foundation decided that we wanted to have a very aggressive goal in 2012. And we said that we want to try to reach 5 billion people. 5 billion people. 5 billion impressions. We missed our number by a ton. Instead of doing 5, we did 31. That's pretty good. And it does take a team to do that. And we are very proud to have with us some elite members of our team. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, some new so, some partners, some people that we're very proud of. They're going to talk about a new program. What I talked to you in the past was some traditional things. In this year, we're going to roll out something called athletic tips athletic tips. And to help talk about that discussion and learn a little bit more, I want to introduce a very important person. ESPN anchor, 20-year veteran of ESPN, Linda Cohn. Linda? And How are you, Ken? Great, great, great. Good, good to, to see you. Good, good to, to see you. you. Always wonderful. Thank you. And joining Linda, who is a good friend of hers, and she's had this conversation before, <laughs> is NFL legend, arguably one of the greatest football players to ever play the game, and our spokesperson for the past three years, Jerry Rice. <laughs> Thank Good you. to see you. All right. All right. Up. Let's get at it. First of all, how's everybody doing? Let, yeah, we're right here. Jerry's trying to bring some energy into the building, and so am I, because I have a big mouth. That's what I do. I don't probably, right, Jerry? I probably don't even need the microphone. Yeah, so much energy you would not believe. <laughs> it's going to be hard to shut her up. That's right. You know, and usually I'm asking Jerry about, you know, the big NFL playoff games like this weekend. We'll get his prediction on the Niners Packers Saturday night in a minute. Hey, great football. Huh? Oh, my goodness. That's coming up. Oh, so you know, this, See, this time is of year, this, this is, is the time of year that I really love. You know what, Play let me football. talk to you about that, because we want to talk about chiropractic, and I, I'm going to stay on track, but I can't help it. He's the GOAT. He's the yeah. greatest of all time. He's here. You're dying to know it. It's like, don't you miss it? What goes through you right now, year after year? Does it get any better to know that so many years have passed since you retired? You're a Hall of Famer now, but what do you miss the most? I, you know, I think just the competition, going out there, competing, knowing that the opponent is trying to shut you down, and still, you want to reach your goal. And... The players right now, they're going through a lot of emotions, you know, because they know how important this game is. And if you lose this football game, your season is over. You don't get a chance to go on that big stage and uh, play for that uh, Super Bowl trophy. Yeah, wow. Well, we'll see how it all plays out. And of course, it gets better and better with the divisional playoffs this weekend. But as you know, Jerry, we're here for a big reason. Why? Because we both care about chiropractic. Yes, We both yes. believe in the art of prevention. And there's no better place where chiropractic works great, should continue to work great, and should be a staple in the future. That's in sports. Doesn't matter what sport. You heard Peekaboo Street talk about it. You hear it from every athlete. It means so much. And I'm so excited, as is Jerry, that we're launching a program here, Foundation for Chiropractic Progress. This is what this foundation yes. does. It's so creative. It thinks of new ways to really kind of hit the mainstream. And in this case, it's tips toward injury, toward injury prevention yes. of mm -hmm. sport. It's about preventing severe injury. Just ask Robert Griffin III about right. that. Yeah, yeah. so mean, he's, he's going to have a tough road. But that was part of uh, when I tore my uh, ACL, my MCL, that was part of what I did with chiropractic, and that got me back on the football field. 
Well, let's talk about that and talk about your history. Why, Jerry, are you so passionate about chiropractic? Well, I'm a big fan of uh, chiropractic care, and I think it's very important to let the general public know about you know, the benefits. And I credit chiropractic with all my success on the football field, what I was able to obtain longevity uh, in my football career. And I have made it a personal goal of mine to educate others you know, about the advantages chiropractic uh, gives to athletes. You know, you bring up a good point, longevity. I mean, I can relate to that. Of course, not on the football field, but I've been at ESPN for 20 years, have been in the business of broadcasting for 30. I've been under chiropractic care for the last three decades, really. I started in my early 20s. My brother is a chiropractor. In fact, he has a booth here at Parker Seminar. <laughs> it's a great Maybe thing. Maybe I'll go get an adjustment. And, uh, there you go. You might yeah. as well. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, know I, I'll you get, never, I'll, it, I'll it never gets birth. old. Never gets old. So you bring up a really good point about why wouldn't athletes want to continue their career and not make it such a – the average NFL player's uh, career is like six years, tops. I, I would say four. See that? Four, because now the game is getting – players are bigger, they're more faster – and, you know, I think Roger uh, Goodell is trying to do everything possible to cut down on injuries, but still it's a balanced sport and you're going to get hit hard. When did you first hear about chiropractic in your career? Well, I, I one of my fellow teammates, Roger Craig, he turned me on to, uh, you know, get an adjustment. And when he turned me on to it, and, and, I, and I, one of the things about me too, I always watch the pros, their training, their health care, and their uh, personal uh, regimen. Then I took it to a whole different level. You know, yes, I, I was blessed with some talent, but it was very important for me to work on the technique and keep my body in the best shape that I could keep my body in. So Roger Craig turned me on to this, and after he did, I started going like twice a week, mm. every week, and I think that's the reason why I was able to play for over 20 years. 20 years, and they still can't catch me. <laughs> 20 years. And I'm, I'm still running five to 10 miles every day. You know, I'm active, and you know, I was really happy that Roger really turned me on to that program. Well, Roger Craig did that for you. At that time, when other athletes, whether it's your teammates or competitors in the NFL, saw what you did, visiting chiropractors, yes. getting the chiropractic care, what was the message back then you would tell them, and what were some of their observations when they were saying, hey, Jerry, what are you doing this I, for? I, I think they were, like, so curious because, like, how can this guy play at a such high level every week? Because you're going to get knocked around, you're going to get banged up, you're going to be hurt, and you're not always going to be healthy. But you still, once you get on that football field, you've got to really set the standard and have a good performance. So they were curious how I, how I was doing that yeah. and still putting up the numbers that I was putting up. And so they started to watch me, you know, the way I trained during the off season, never taking a day off and still keeping my body in great shape. And, and I think I inspired some of those guys to also go and, and, and get a checkup. How about today's athlete, Jerry, having a chance to speak to today's NFL player? What would you tell them about chiropractic care? Well, if they want a long, productive career, you know, I feel like you, you, need to, uh, you need to take care of your body. You have to uh, put money into that engine. And if you want to sustain being on the football field a long time, and I wanted to be the best football player to ever play the game. So, well, thank he you is. for that. Thank you. So, I knew how important it was to take care of my body and for my body to be able to go out there and, and, and really work on all cylinders on that given Sunday or that Monday night, and, and plus on, on, on the big stage during the Super Bowl. So I invested in my body, and, and basically what I tell those guys also to do the same. You mentioned the big stage. I thought you meant also must have helped you win Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, you know, it's all in the hips. <laughs> it's all in the hips, ladies. <laughs> the hips, boy, my hips are so flexible now you would not believe. <laughs> We'll just leave that up to okay, our imagination, okay. right, right, ladies? Okay. Um, hardest hit on the football field. Give us, take us back 
hardest hit you ever got and how chiropractic well, helped you bounce back from that? Well, the hardest thing for me was in 1997 when I tore my anterior cruciate, also my media collateral ligament. And after that injury, I had some adversity and I was not able to uh, go out there and produce like I wanted to. And it took a long, long road to get back. A lot of sweat, a lot of tears, but I think because of chiropractic and, and uh, just my drive to get back on the football field, I was able to go out and, uh, and come back as the old Jerry Rice. The old Jerry Rice looking brand new. Isn't he, doesn't he look great? Yeah. Telling you. Oh, one, 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 one more thing I want to say about that. I think because of my hard work and my dedication and also chiropractic, I was able to come back in 14 weeks. Mm. You know, it was unfortunate that you know, I scored a touchdown, then I cracked my patella. And I was not able to, to go to the Super Bowl, not the Super Bowl, but the Pro Bowl. It would have been 11 years in a row. So I missed out on that, but you know, with the help of chiropractic, the next year I came back, I think I called over 80 balls for a thousand some, something yards, nine touchdowns, and I went to my 12th Pro Bowl, you know, after coming back from a serious injury like that. As long as you're throwing numbers out there, I think the last I looked, you own 38 NFL records. Yeah, you know, oh my God, Kevin Johnson broke one of my records. I know, he did, but hey, you know. Hey, you know, I, I do not like, Okay, I'm, I'm not. Let I, it out. This I don't is want. The place. I don't want to be a little selfish here, but I understand what Calvin Johnson did, but that team was 14 and 12. Right. So a lot of those receptions, and not taking anything away from what he accomplished on the football field, they weren't in the ball game. The year that I put up that record, I, I think I, I had over 15 touchdowns. He had five touchdowns. You were playing for something. Your I was, team was I, I was good. playing for something. So team's going to play you a little bit, you know, differently. Not knocking anything that he did because I was the first one to congratulate him. But, you know, I wanted to get into the playoffs and get to the big dance. I got one for you, Jerry. Yeah. Who is the toughest to go up against one-on-one -on -one in your career? Ain't nobody. Nobody can hang with me. I, I <laughs> that's, that's just the bottom line. I'm going to be honest with you guys. <laughs> no, probably the toughest guys, I, I would say Deion Sanders. Yep. and Daryl Green. Nice. It, guys, it was so frustrating because you got two guys that ran maybe a 4-2. They were like, you know, a Raptor or something like that on the football field. So I really had to work them off the line of scrimmage. I wanted to dictate to them what I wanted to do. So I would come to the line with a plan, and I, I would use two or three moves at the line of scrimmage, try to get them, you know, off their base, then hope the quarterback throws the ball on time. Wow. Yeah, but great. those two gave me, they gave me a lot of trouble, but I, I was able to, you know, deal with them. All right. Jerry, uh, Jerry Rice, everybody. He's not going anywhere yet. Yeah. We have a lot to share. We want a lot to dive into, especially with this exciting new program that helps amateur athletes. I'm talking about tips. You heard about it. We have a special panel. Great chiropractors coming up right now. You can sit, relax, be part I, of this. Can I say one more thing? You can sit. This is your okay. stage. All right, guys. I, I've been with you guys for over three years now, and I just want to say this to the chiropractors. If you believe in your care, make yourself available. You know, join the foundation. Do what you do. Make things easier for patients. So I challenge you guys on that, okay? It's well said. All right. And you know... Jerry brings up a good point because, Jerry, you were the best on a great team. You need a team. Right. You exactly. can't do it alone. You can't do it individually in your own practice. If you all bond together for the common cause, good things happen. Super Bowls happen. Yes. yes right? Yes, it so does. So the Super Bowl of chiropractic. Why not? Right? All right, let's bring out some more great people. Have a seat, Jerry. Pick a seat, any okay. seat. All right. We have about 12 seats all up right. here. I don't know what I'm going to do. All right. Here we go. This is a great, great panel. Here we go. I'd like to welcome this guy I love because me, the New Yorker, the New York accent, Jerry forgives me that I grew up a New York Giants fan and that back in 86 and 90 didn't go well for his team, but it went great Thanks for Big Thanks a lot, Blue. Linda. I, I appreciate that. 
Who knows Thanks how for, many more rings you could have owned, for I, goodness sake. I really sake. appreciate you bringing back bad <laughs> memories there like that. There you go. See, you know, you have something in common with Tom Brady because, you know, Giants took two possible <laughs> rings away from him as well. So uh, let us bring out, I love the guy, none other than two-time Super Bowl champ, former Giant great Mark Collins is with us. You, you know what, guys? This is the first time we have met, and it's not on a football field. Because when he lined up in front of me, it was going down. Seriously, it was going to go down. You want to sit next to Jerry? Sit next to Jerry. They got to get acquainted. Mark played for nine years, had never met Jerry Rice until today. Nine, nine, nine years. For nine years. I played 13 in the league, right? This is the first time I ever met him off the field. And then in the NFL ranks, you, you, you play golf tournaments right. and stuff. Never met him until now. I got to tell you, man, you're the best player I've ever played against. Oh. Ever played against Thank you, Mark. That's great. Don't take exception about the best corner, because I think it was me. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. You see how chiropractic brings people together? <laughs> oh, All right, let's keep it going. We're going to come together with, let us welcome in none other than the chiropractor for the Miami Dolphins, Spencer Barron. Also to the stage, give a warm welcome to the Baltimore Ravens chiropractor, Alan Sokoloff. And last but not least, the one and only Jay Greenstein, chiropractor for the Washington Redskin cheerleaders. Really? It's wow. a tough job, but okay. somebody's got to be that guy. <laughs> all right, let's all get cozy. This is nice. All right. See, they're, they're reminiscing. They're talking about old times. Let, let's talk about, I was brought up early, of course, tips. Right? This is fantastic. This is big. It helps amateur athletes. It's all about prevention. And Mark, I'm going to start with you. First, I'm going to start with you. Why chiropractic? You've been under care since 1986. What was the difference for you? Well, I tell you, when I got drafted by the Giants in 86, coming out of college, and Jerry knows this, we're, we're put through a rigorous test going through the combine, getting your body ready and the strains and stresses that go through that. So by the time you get to, to training camp, you're really beat up. And you can try anything you want to say that, you know, you're ready to go. So I go to training camp, I'm physically beat up, mm -hmm. physically. So we break camp, and I go out with some, uh, some friends of mine, met this guy who was a chiropractor. And I was so beat up, I said, I'll try anything. Oh, he's going, come on, Mark, try this out. So I went and tried it, and it just worked. And I felt so good, I implemented it in my whole regiment, my whole career. Football game, go to the chiropractor. Football game, go to the chiropractor. Even more so, I've, I'm, I'm telling my son to do it now at, at the younger age of 14. And it is my, yeah. And now, this is my passion to st start younger, because I found out late, 21, 22. And my, my goal and my passion now is to help this foundation get to younger kids. So with the help of my business, 2-5 Sports, I'm committed to make this happen. Fantastic. Now, how about you, Spencer, and what you do, you know, for the team, for the Dolphins? Tell me about this and why chiropractic, or why is this important? Well, it's simple. You know, it was really just a matter of understanding. Number one, the National Football League is the most successful sports business in the country, if not the world. With that said, I've been with the Miami Dolphins for 17 years. By the way, I worked on people that wanted to crush you. But, anyway, <laughs> um, but aside, aside from that, I've been with, I see what you're doing. <laughs> I've been with nine coaches, starting with Coach Don Shula, and I watched how systems and strategies were put into place to ultimate goal, win. And I always was inspired by that, and it felt, how could we apply those same principles and strategies to the chiropractic profession, the business, and winning? this healthcare, in this healthcare arena. So, 
it needed some sort of marketing and, and public relations strategy that was, that was paramount, something that, was, that would create a profile, an image to chiropractic that, that was bar none similar to what the, unfortunately, what the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies did. And then I met the, the king and queen of marketing, Joe and Laura Carabello, who everybody can believe that and say that who have met them, that they have learned those strategies deeply of what moves people to take medication or, or, or go with this insurance company or what have you. And they worked for those people but have a passion for chiropractic. And that is the team that I wanted to be on just like any other winning team that we wanted to be a part of. That's how, why. How about you, Alan? Well, I have to first say that I spoke to Ray prior to his retirement. I said, Ray, we got to do something so because I have to go to this Parker seminar and, and I have to make sure that we go on a win so then I'll, you know, I'll just meet you in Denver and so everything worked out so far. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> Ray Lewis, of course, is who Alan's talking about. Um, for me, I have a daughter that's a dancer. I have a daughter that's a soccer player. And for me, I watch their friends not get the proper care that they need. For me, you talk about going young. Those kids need to learn from the beginning about starting young under chiropractic care. And I've had the opportunity to work with them. I've had the opportunity to work with local high schools, work with the Maryland Terrapins, and I'm happy to say my 13th year with the Baltimore Ravens. And I do apologize for 2000, because I grew up a Giants fan. Yeah, well, it wasn't meant to be, it's okay. But that, each step along the way, there's much more intelligent athletes that are learning more at a younger age. So when they get to the show, when they get to the level that these guys are at, they know what to ask for and they want the highest quality care possible. They want chiropractic care and that's why I'm in. All right. right. And you know what, Jay? We know, you know, the Washington Redskins cheerleaders need to be adjusted at all times. So I love my job, what can I say, right? And my, pa <laughs> and my patients actually wanted to marry that guy, so, you know, <laughs> Jerry, you're all over, man. But, um, but you know, for, for me, you know, nothing pains me more than seeing patients and athletes get mismanaged. And we see this in our practices every day. It's the 40-year-old, you know, male tennis player, he goes, to, he sprains his ankle, he goes to the emergency room, and they give him drugs, and they give him a boot to wear for four months at 800 bucks. Or it's the female soccer athlete that tears her ACL, and not only does she not have appropriate post-surgical rehab, but she doesn't even get any training in prevention on the opposite side. The TIPS program is the perfect link to connect the athletic world to chiropractic and chiropractic practices to ensure that those patients get the care they need and deserve, the life-changing care they deserve and need. And these are the kind of programs that, you know, the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress starts, creates, moving forward. That's what progress is all about. You know, so Mark, you mentioned your, your company, if you're taking high school kids and trying to find them ways to get into college to play sports. How do we move forward? And I'm going to throw this and start it with you, Mark, and then to, to you guys, and then we'll get Jerry involved as well, to you guys about people don't know that NFL players get chiropractic mm -hmm. care, that Jerry Rice has been getting chiropractic care, that Mark Collins got chiropractic care. Current players are getting it. How do we get this word out? Well, this is it. The, yeah. Us, this is as simple as that. We got to get out there more often, and I know with my platform, I could get there because I'm affiliated with an, an NCAA, and I've intuits a lot of high schools. So that's how we got to do it. Use guys like me, Mr. Rice here, to get down and, and get it done. Yeah, I think it's it's very important to bring awareness, and you know, I, I think I have uh, a great platform because doing a lot of work with uh, ESPN, right? And you know, guys, I. You know, I preach it all the time. I mean, my dedication to the game, how hard I work, and also taking the time to uh, take care of my body. Because I never wanted to, like, shortchange anybody. If you paid your hard-earned money to see exceptional football, I wanted you to witness that. And, you know, I think with chiropractic, I was always able to go out there and always perform at a very high level. And, and, you know, it's just getting the word out to those guys, letting them know that they need to take care of their bodies. 
Having, having been involved with sports chiropractic for so long, I've always said that the most powerful vehicle to getting chiropractic out there to the public is through superstar professional athletes like these two. And you would be surprised at all the other ones that are out there that cross the, the lines of f way beyond football and soccer and basketball and everything that are superstars that really deeply use and believe that chiropractic is an absolute part of their toolkit and tips is the way to disseminate, disseminate that information that these, the star power has for the public. I urge you to be a part of it. A lot of us are all very good chiropractors and sometimes we don't have the mechanism to get the good information that we need to pass on to our patients to let them know what we do, to let them know how we do it. They're unaware because we don't talk about it, because we haven't had a way to get it to them. Now we have a way and we're doing it through TIPS. And not only do we have a way, but we need the resource funding. We need the funding to help build this, build this program. 30 billion positive impressions. They've got a great track record. With your help and your support, we can get this TIPS program booming. Thank you. All right, let's give a hand Thank to this you. panel. Thank you. I just want to say, Jerry Rice will be available to sign photos, but only, and I mean only with a capital O, if you join up right now. That's right, but we can fix that. So here's what we're going to do. Nice. Good way to hand off to Kent. There go we go. We're going to fix this. I want to read a list of names that people have really helped us in the foundation, ask them to stand, and please recognize them when I'm done. Foot Levelers, Standard Process, Performance Health, the Florida Chiropractic Association, Life University, Palmer College, Michigan Association, Erconia, Northwestern College, MPA Media, Script, Breakthrough Coaching, all of the college and 2,500 individuals. Would they stand if we called their name? And would the rest of you stand now too? Everybody stand up. Dr. Gentempo, here's a pledge sheet, isn't it? All right. <clears throat> I like to call this the moment of truth. Here's the, here's the deal, folks. Look at what's going on here, and look at the contribution that's being made on behalf of your profession. And there is no equivocation here. You're either you're in or you're out. There's no in between those two. It's either or, not both. So you're in or you're out. Obviously, I think you need to be in. And if your mind goes immediately to scarcity, then you're telling yourself something. What do you see when you wake up tomorrow morning before the program starts? You're going to walk into your bathroom and you're going to brush your teeth. And you're going to look at yourself in the mirror. I want to know what you're going to see. Don't leave. Don't, don't leave. Don't leave. Nobody Can't leave right leave. now. Close those doors. We promise you're going to be done in a minute here. We'll be done in a minute here. The reality is what prevents people from taking action on things typically is something from your past. Either some, There's not a person in this room that hasn't had something bad that's happened to them. And there's not a person in this room that hasn't done something bad maybe that they regretted. And as a result, we lead to inaction because we feel we're not worthy. We're talking about taking heroic action here. Stand up with luminaries, big name people who are here to say they want to stand up for our profession. Well, what does it say to them if they're saying they'll do it, but you won't? There's no contribution that's too small, but you should give a lot. And the more you give, the less scarce your mindset is and the more abundance you bring into your life and you turn it into a big year. So now is the time, not 10 minutes, not 20 minutes, not 30 minutes from now. Jerry Rice and the others will be there in the vendor area, get pictures with them, et cetera. Also, the foundation has assembled extraordinary tools that no one chiropractor could afford to put together as assets to promote your practice and your community. Bottom line is this. You don't want to leave this room right now and not fill out a form if you're not pledged already. And you should up your pledge if you have one right now. As I said earlier, I think it's a really good idea. Pay less taxes, give more money to the foundation. And let's support this and make it make a big difference. It's not about you needing new patients. It's about new patients needing you. You right. get it? It's about the patients that need you. And you've heard from some of the high profile patients who talk about what chiropractic's meant to them. What about the silent majority out there? You have to get out. So take out the forms, get a pen, fill them out. At both doors, people will be posted to be able to receive your forms. Go in and get your picture taken. And I want you tomorrow morning to look yourself in the eye when you're brushing your teeth, give yourself a little wink and say, I did it. And Stand up for chiropractic. You're standing now. 
This is a moment. Moments of decision create destiny. Make an impact on the world. We have a team that wants to play. They want to go in and score for us. Let's get them into the game. Let's get into the game harder. You can do it. We are a team. We're winners, but we're a secret. Let's fix it. Fill this out, please. Put your name on here. Get in. There's no reason why all of us can't join because we take everyone. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do it. Okay. Thanks, team. All right. Thanks, everybody. Anybody inspired to talk about a pledge right now they're going to give? Do we have anybody that wants to make a commitment? Come up here to the microphone and say something. Mike, anybody want you. to do that? Please, thank you. Here's my pledge. Thank you. thank you. What's your name? Thank you. Ed, where are you from? Thank you, Ed. Fill them out. You can fill this out. You come up and say a word if you'd like. You can give it to someone in the back as you go to get your photo taken. Yes. We have, we, please come up. This is Robert. I'm from Cairo Touch. And in the fourth quarter, we challenged our guys and said, hey, listen, we've made a pledge to donate a small portion of every transaction to the foundation. Let's see what kind of work you can do. Our guys went to work, and I'm happy to announce that we also said if you can break a certain threshold, we'll match whatever those doctors can give. We came you with you said don't, you'll match whatever the doctors give. give. So we came with Good a place. check, 57125 but that's the doctor's portion, and Kyra Touch is glad and proud to be able to add another 57125 wow. That's $114,000! $114,000! Thank you so much! Come on up here! Wonderful! Thank you! Thank you. Thank you.